So I'm Ethan Krupp. I am the part of the sound design team for the show as well as the props designer for the show. Uh, I also have some other jobs, technical director and uh, oversight because of my being the advisor to the BU players. So the approach to the props design for the show is one where we're trying to capture the whimsy of the show, the playfulness of the show, with also some of the humor and some of the unexpectedness. There are a lot of twists and turns in this show. There are things that you don't always expect are going to happen. And so sometimes the props, uh, we have to be careful. We walk a fine line, I guess is the way to describe it with the props, of creating a world that makes sense to the audience that fits with the rest of the world of the play, the scenery, the costumes, the sound, but also doesn't tip our hand or, or reveal to the audience before they're supposed to get revealed some of the jokes or some of the humor or some of the the ideas that are in the play so for me that's one of the biggest challenges of this show is finding all of those where's that balancing point right like where does it serve what the show needs but not going too far off the edge or or revealing too much before it's time my name is max Kreis and i am the assistant props designer and also the props coordinator Basically, a lot of the props in this play, it's interesting because this play sort of mixes together like old things and new things. So finding props, because and some props look like they're new things and some props look like they're old things, if that makes sense. And it was kind of interesting when I was like um, pulling props out of the warehouse and stuff to kind of find some things that like had elements of both be seem seeming old like medieval, like the theme of the play, and also modern. Um, and finding some things that fit with more the modernity and some things that fit with more the uh, medieval aspect. My favorite prop is probably the bingo cage, because I find the whole aspect of uh, picking who plays what character on stage to be very, very interesting. There are, there are a lot of fun props in this show to find. like. And, and create things that are sort of of unexpected. Um, there's a trophy uh, that, that shows up, and um, it's identified. It, it it never is identified this way that the audience hears, but in the the stage directions of the script, it is referred to as the ugly trophy. Um, and so there's sort of that sense of like, how do we find? How do you make it look like a trophy, but also sort of honor that playwright's intention of there's an ugliness to it. Uh, that was a very fun project to build. And it has a chicken on top to like, I think the point of having the chicken on top of the trophy is to like uh, sort of call everybody out for being afraid of dying. And then also sort of been like, congratulations on living your life. Here's a trophy that has a chicken on top, like, I think that's kind of funny. And it just says participant, it doesn't even say winner. Hi, my name is Fred Ubley. I'm the lighting designer for Bloomberg University's production of Everybody. And I'm Ethan Krupp. I am the half of, I'm not the sound designer, I'm half of the sound design team uh, alongside uh, Professor David Miller. So the sound design is, like much of the show, tries to capture some of the whimsy and the fun and the seriousness and the all of the different aspects that this play encapsulates. So there are moments where the it, it's both ridiculous and also very sort of over the top, but also moments that are kind of sweet and tender and trying to find that really sort of poignant human expression or human human relationship. There's a lot in this play that deals with relationships, and so sound becomes an integral part of how we think of relationships. So we're trying to capture that in the sound design uh, and, and create a, a world that will make sense to the audience and also help guide them through the, the journey of the play. The lighting design of everybody um... I think lighting design for theater has two, you can kind of go in two different tracks. You can go for something more realistic and you can go for something more mood based. And with this play, considering that it's very old, old, old origins is that of a medieval morality tale, 
the archetypal natures, archetype, stereotype, pick your poison. Um, I've decided to go in a much more mood-based uh, approach to lighting for this show. So I'm not really concerned about the reality of any of the um, situations posited. You know, it, is, it, is it hot out? Is it cold out? I'm more, I'm really concerned with feeling. How should we be feeling during this scene? Should we be feeling apprehensive? Should we be feeling warm? Should we yeah. be feeling... And then what does that mean lighting-wise? Does that mean does that mean blue light? Does that mean warmer amber light? Does that mean textured light? Does that so? Um, yeah, no, it's 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 really it's uh, it's wonderful to not work on anything that has uh, what one could call a basis. We've had to yeah. find yes. basis again and again and again. Yeah, uh, there. What reality is in this show? Yeah, where do yeah. we want to put it? Right, and that's that's been one of I think one of the really freeing things about the design of both the sound and the lights is that that the reality. And it's one of the reasons when we were originally looking at shows to pick that this show captured our attention because it gives that freedom to designers and to the, the creative team uh, to create, you know, what is the world of this play supposed to be? What what world do we want to create? Um, and, and then to, to how does it manifest itself on stage? Mm -hmm.